Hello, and welcome to the Hand Plane Challenge. I'm Mark, your host, and the Olympics are coming up. You know how they always say that, or you always see that four out of the five judges give the contestant a perfect ten, and the Russian judge gives them a five. Well, I'm filling in for the Russian judge today. My role here is to be critical of these planes that we evaluate so that we can all understand what their strengths and weaknesses are. Today's competition is between two auto set planes, a Sergeant 710 and a Stanley G5. This video is the first in a two-part series on these auto set planes. In the first, we'll evaluate the engineering of the two planes. And in the second, we'll see if an auto set plane can really auto set. The term auto set refers to the claim that a user can remove the cutter, go off and hone it and sharpen it, and then put it back in the plane without losing the depth of cut setting. This is a disputed claim, and we'll be testing this in part two of the series. Now we've covered the histories of both the Sargent and Stanley companies in previous videos in this series. So please refer back to these videos if you want more details. Instead, let's just take a moment to trace the evolution of these planes. Wooden planes were like this coffin smoother, were pretty much the standard in the 1800s, especially the early and middle part of the 1800s. A guy named M. B. Tidy came up with an idea. People tend to have problems with wedging the cutter in here. These things will break or they'll wear out or, or whatnot. Tidy's idea was to take this sort of assembly and substitute it with a metal throw. The rest of the plane is still wood, but the sort of stress points become metal instead of wood. Along comes John Porteous Gage, and he has the idea that well, if you're going to fill this throat with metal, and we're going to cover this plane in an upcoming video, so we not today, but coming up. So if you're going to fill this throat with metal, you might as well put a depth of cut adjuster in there as well. You've already done half the work. So this is the gauge self-setting plane. Now in this competition, we're going to be looking at a Stanley G5C. Stanley um, was attracted to the gauge depth of cut adjusting mechanism and, and bought the technology in 1919. They used this design in the wooden body planes until 1934 and in metal body planes like this one until uh, 1941. So basically kept making the wooden body planes but also adapted it to metal body planes. Um, one thing I'll say before we go on to the sergeant plane, uh, I don't have a G4 or a G4C. The closest I could come to a smoothing plane is a G5C. And furthermore, this G5 
sea was a rescue. You know, the plane that you buy for five bucks because it's totally covered in rust and just horrible to look at and you can't ever possibly think why, how it could ever be a decent usable plane again. Well, that was this plane. So, two issues here. One, you know, it's not like new by no means. And two, it's not a smoothing plane. It's a jack plane. So, Sargent apparently did parallel development, obviously also, like Stanley, observing the gauge planes and thinking it was a good idea. And so they came up with their own version of an auto swept plane, which is the Sargent 710 in this case. They patented, you know, they didn't really copy this off of Stanley. They, they really copied it more off of Gage because they patented this version of the auto set plane in 1915. And Stanley didn't actually buy the technology until 1919. So, uh, so indeed, Sargent and Stanley pretty much auto setting in parallel. They started manufacturing shortly thereafter and continued producing this plane until 1943. A Sargent 710, like this one, sold for $5.60 in 1925. And you might say, peanuts. But actually $5.60 was a fair amount of money in 1925 and actually that was about double a full two times that of a conventional 400 series sergeant plane. This might explain our relatively few ex fewer examples of this plane in the wild today and it may well be because that was a hefty premium to pay back in 1925. Regrettably I haven't yet found the price for a G4 or a G5, so I can't really make a comparison. Okay, enough of the evolution of these planes. Onwards to the engineering details. Okay, first up, the Sargent 710. We can see Sargent VBM right in front of the throat. Behind the frog, we can see, not very well, I'm sure, but uh, it has the 1915 patent date cast into the bed, as well as a fairly small 710. Normally, I would think uh, you would want a more pronounced number size there to show off your plane, but I guess they had other ideas. All right. This is the Stanley G5C. Um, how do we know? Uh, this is actually a Type 1 plane made from 1919 up to 1924. How do we know it's a Type 1? There's no G cast in with the, the model number. Later on, that would be a number uh, G5. And secondly, it has patent applied for behind the bed. The earliest type ones had patent applied for. Later on, they had the, uh, the first patent date. Okay. Now, as we compare these planes, we're going to do, we're going to try to do uh, comparisons on both planes at the same time because these two planes are remarkably similar. So, how are they similar? Both of them have fixed 
frogs. We'll take it apart in just a little bit, but you can take my word for it for now. No adjustment on the position of the frog. Hence, no, posi no adjustment of the mouth opening. And as we'll see, both planes, because of, the, of not adjusting the mouth, they both have actually quite tight mouths compared to other smoothing planes. Um, both of them have lever caps with the chip breaker built into the lever cap as opposed to having the chip breaker um, be clamped to the cutter. Both planes use an inline depth adjuster as you can see on the Sargent and as you can see on the Stanley. Both planes use custom cutters. These, these cutters have to be this way because they're all part of the, the auto set design features. Okay, there, there, that was some of the similarities. Now let's take a look at each plane in a little more detail. Here's the Sargent 710. The Sargent 710 has lateral adjustment. Let's go ahead and take it apart. As you can see, before I do that, the lateral adjuster has a little tab right here that fits into this slot and then when you move it back and forth it moves the cutter from side to side. The depth adjustment, let's go ahead and take it apart, there's a tab right here that fits into this hole in the cutter and the depth adjuster moves this tab up and down. We'll just put it back together for just a little bit. You can see with me just holding it there like that, gosh almighty that is one tight mouth. And we'll look at it again when we, especially when we do the shaving test, but Holy smokes, that's a tight mouth. You can have a tight mouth or you can have a tight mouth. It's entirely up to you. Um, the chip breaker, as I said, was integral to the lever cap. So what it does here is the part that rests on the beam, if you will, right here, that part moves up and down. It, this little metal piece right here is, sent, is, is captured between these two protrusions in the lever cap, so it moves up and down. Thus, when it's in here, that little piece moves, when it moves, the whole lever cap slides up and down. It's actually a fairly clever design. I, I, I was pretty much impressed by most of the design features on the Sargent 710. Another nice feature of this plane, notice how the cutter gets narrower up at the top. It's not too difficult to manipulate the depth adjustment controls. It is not so easy on the, on the Stanley, as we'll see in just a minute. Okay, lastly, we'll just go ahead and take it apart all the way, because there's not much else to, you know, take apart on these planes. But we'll go ahead and take the frog out so that you can see how the guts, what the guts look like. The, the, the frog, the, the 
top of these cap screws here fits tightly into this recess so it pretty much holds the frog surface in one place. Like I said, it doesn't move back and forth but it does hold it in one place. So that just pops out like that. There's your fixed frog together with this of course. There's the lever cap. You can see the depth adjustment knob moving up and down, lateral adjuster, and so on and so forth. Alright, we'll put it back together real quick. Hopefully it uh, should go pretty smoothly. Done. Just to point out the cutter, sergeant, number 710, VBM, New Haven, Connecticut, U.S. of A. Lever cap, and we're good to go. Next up, the Stanley. So, try to ignore all the hideous features of this plane. Yeah, I'm, obviously, I haven't got around to Japaning it yet. As Donald Rumsfeld said, you go, you make a video with the planes that you have, not the planes that you want. Okay, G5, no lateral adjuster. Um, the design was interesting here, which I thought I would point out first. As you can see, in this case, the cutter has this assembly mounted to it. These two metal pieces sandwiched together and, and are secured by one screw. This bracket has this little slot in here that mates with this thing at the end of the depth adjuster lever. Um, it was alleged that it didn't need a lateral adjustment lever because this part right here is supposed to fit relatively securely into this slot right here. And indeed, that is sort of true if we put it in there. It, it, it's, that is indeed the case. However, it is not without some depth adjustment because as you will note here, the slots here that, that the screw goes through to sandwich the two parts together, these slots are elongated. So you can loosen this screw, move this thing back and forth, and sort of change the position of the you can even actually rotate it a little bit uh, there's nothing to prevent that happening and so and so that will accomplish some lateral adjustment however this is a painful process though because as you can imagine it's you have to disassemble the plane to do this change the setting and then put it back together and see if you did what you needed to do. So just really a fairly much unworkable situation. You better try really pretty hard to get the end of the cutter for perfectly perpendicular when you sharpen it because you'll save yourself a lot of grief in the long run. Okay. As I said, this, this one also has an integral uh, chip breaker. Now this is different from the Sargent design. Here, the chip breaker is a piece of metal behind the lever cap. So you loosen these two screws, you move it up and down, so it's, it's, it's going to be sitting in there like that. You move it up and down, to see where the end of this plate, the lever cap is always going to be here. The lever cap is fixed in place by, by the castings mating on the bar. 
and then the plate behind here will move up and down as you move these screws. Lastly, by way of comparison to the sergeant, I found adjusting the depth of cut fairly difficult on this thing. You can kind of reach in like that, but the basically the cutter gets in the way of of, of the knob here. The knob is fairly further down as you can see the cutter goes up higher and it's also wider so you have to approach it. That, that works okay but it's not you, you have fewer degrees of freedom here than you do with the with the sergeant. Okay I think uh, lastly there's there's some identifications on this bracket here I think in this case they're too hard to read um, and I think not much identification on the lever cap on the cutter I'm sorry you can see easily the fixed frog here I guess technically it will come out there's a screw here directly behind the crossbar but you have to also take out some pins here on the side you can't see them very well that is not something that you would be very interested in doing so we're and we're not going to do that so I guess you could take this screw out if you can get to it and maybe you can pivot it back and forth to clean it or service it or something but that would be about it okay there you have it. Um, a couple more general comments. I sort of dislike the chip breakers that are integral to the lever cap. You know, it, it's, it's frankly hard to see down here. You can see, especially with a tight mouth like these guys have, you, it's it's just very difficult to get down here and see how close you're getting the chip breaker to the end of the cutter. It's the same on both the Sargent and the Stanley. Now, of course, in a regular Bailey style plane, you know, you just you just move the chip breaker up and down, and you can see it right in front of you. So it's it's super easy. So that's one thing I, I don't like very much about integral chip breakers. Um, these planes are um, a little bit lighter than their count counterparts by about a half a pound which is not necessarily a real advantage uh, maybe less tiring to use but you have to maybe press harder to get uh, good shavings. Okay, so that's it for part one. In the next video, we're going to do a more, um, more shavings than usual so that we can test whether or not an auto set plane can really auto set. And then we'll follow that up with the results of the competition. We'll see if there's a winner between these two planes. Please subscribe to this channel so I can know that people are watching it and please leave comments. I really like to get the feedback and we can hope to make the series even better. Thank you and we'll see you next time.